The first thing I need for this is the correctly sized protractor and I need to cut that in half and that will be stuck on the piece of plywood that I'm going to cut out next. Next, I need to drill a hole through the center point and to fit into that three quarter inch hole, I need to make a three quarter inch diameter pivot. Now I can take that pivot and make a very simple jig to cut the arc around the protractor. That leaves the paper a little bit woolly. I'm going to quickly clean that up with a sanding block. Now that I have that done, I need to make a semicircular slot in the protractor and I need to make this big enough for a quarter inch bolt to go through. Except this time I'm not going to use the center pivot. I'm going to use that outside edge pressed up tight against the edges of my fence to make the cut. After I got the slot cut all the way through, I moved the fence back to widen out the slot and cut it again. And of course this left a lot of fuzzy paper on the surface. And the easiest way to clean that up is with a sharp knife or a razor blade. Or you can cut all that paper away that you don't need. All you really need is the scale on the outside. With that done, I need to make the sub fence that's going to fasten to it. And once again, that'll be half inch Baltic birch plywood. And before I can glue it on, I need to cut a couple of slots in here. I need these so that I can adjust the fence back and forth and get it closer to the blade. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I can make the cleat that rides in the miter slot in the saw. And I've got a scrap of oak here that's just about the right thickness and the right width. I'm going to trim it down until it's a perfect fit in the slot.
And next I want to get some clear finish sprayed on here to protect the paper scale. But it's also a good time to check to make sure that the sub fence is square. And since I know my table saw fence is absolutely square, I'll slide it up against that to check. Now that I have the main part of this done, I'm working perfectly. I need to make a pointer. The first hole will be near the end of it and just big enough for the screw to go through. But the other hole, closer to the point, will be larger so I'll have room to swing the pointer back and forth for fine adjustment. Next, I can work on the fence, but first I need to have a look and see if I have the right type hinge here to use. Originally, I was going to make the hinge from wood, but since this is a shop tool and it's going to be treated roughly and perhaps fall on the floor occasionally, the wooden hinge is probably not going to be as durable as I need, so I want to use a metal one instead. And I got several options here, but this one that I salvaged from an old drop leaf table will probably work the best. The idea for this fence is that it's in two pieces. The second piece would be an extension that folds back out of the way. And in folding back out of the way, it would be a convenient place to keep the stop block so that wouldn't be getting in the way of cuts where I don't need to use it. I thought I was done with the router table and I was going to put it away, but then I figured out a way to make a locking mechanism to lock the extension in place once it's just folded out. And that involves cutting a dovetail in the top on both pieces. Now all I need to do is make a key that fits in there. It'll slide back and forth, and I'll be cutting that from the same maple that I made the fence. I'm going to file some grooves in here just to make this easy to grip, to slide it back and forth. Now I need to mark and drill a couple of holes in the fence. And these are for the bolts that go through the sub fence. And I really wasn't paying close enough attention here. I made a mistake and drilled the holes on the wrong ends of the slots. But it is just a shop project and not a piece of fine furniture. So a couple of extra holes are no big deal, but I will take the time to patch them.
One of the last things to do is to get the hinge put on that I picked out earlier. And to make this all work properly, I need to space it out a quarter inch. So I've cut blocks from quarter inch plywood and I'm gonna pin those in place first and then drive in three screws to hold the hinge in place. And I'll do the same with the other leaf with the parts of the fence lined up. I'm going to use the table saw fence and my framing square to set the guide. And then I'm going to double check it by putting this square against the blade. After the glue dried, I can cut off the fancy plugs that I used to fix my mistake and then do some final sanding to clean it up. Last thing to do is to make the stop for the fence and this is very simple just three pieces and a way to tighten it and the idea here is that when you don't need this stop it goes on that extension and you fold the extension back The small screw that I'm putting in here is there to hold the clamp in place and it needs to be left loose so that the back clamp is free to move and clamp onto the fence. And here you can see how it works. It slides over onto that extension, but I can see I made another mistake. The clamp handle should have been on the front so that I can actually fold this all the way back. And what do you know, here's another mistake. I need to shorten this piece so that it clears the sub fence. 